Everybody, it's me, Rick Acosta, the Dodger Card Collector, coming to you with another video. Today is Monday, September 11th. Uh, whenever I say that day, I can't stop thinking about what happened 22 years ago on this day. And uh, I can tell you where I was. I can tell you what I did all day. And it, it's it's never going to help the situation that happened that day. Um, so uh, I just thought I'd bring it up just because today was September 11th. It's a day that I never forget. One thing that um, I do try doing on September 11th, besides remembering what happened that day and, and all the, what happened to the people who were, went to work that day and their family members or the, the firemen or the policemen, the first responders who got trapped that day in the towers. Um, one thing I try to do from a, a sports perspective uh, it's a documentary that MLB, I think, shows every year on 9-11. That's nine innings from ground zero. And uh, to this day, it, just, it still registers. It's, 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 just, it's just tragic. So uh, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but I always tell you the date of my show. And when I did, I go, I have to at least acknowledge this. So um, I'll never forget, and I hope you never forget. Uh, as I tape this, it is almost 4 o'clock Pacific time, uh, an hour and a half before the big Monday night football game between the, the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers uh, playing for the New York Jets for the first time. I literally, just before I jumped on to create this video, noticed uh, that both teams were taken off the field. I think there's bad weather in New York, and I don't know if there's lightning strikes or what's going on. So... As you see this, I don't know if the game was, was played or delayed, um, but uh, I'm looking forward to a little Monday Night Football. For those of you that have Comcast and Charter, congratulations, ABC and Disney finally pulled off a deal with those networks, so all of you have your local ABC affiliates back on. Uh, I knew that would happen. It, it, it's too big of a deal to lose Monday Night Football, so let's all, let's all enjoy some football today. I know I enjoyed football yesterday. I am very happy <laughs> that, uh, you know what, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why I'm not happy first, because there are some teams out there, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, Cincinnati Bengals, um, Seattle Seahawks, and uh, I'm missing, I'm missing one in that group. Um, oh, the New York Giants. It's like, where, where were you guys yesterday? Did, did you just bother not to wake up. I mean, it's one thing to lose on opening day. It's another thing not to show up. So it's only opening day. It's only one loss. But I, I had to give that little dig in there just because uh, some of you are going to be pissed off at me. But I'm like, well, wow, at least show up and be competitive. While I didn't expect the Rams to beat the Seahawks yesterday, I, I was just really hoping they'd play a half-decent game. So um, I was pleased to see they won. I'm very happy. I know they're playing the 49ers next week, and the 49ers seem to dominate the Rams and dominate the regular season. So uh, let's see what happens this Sunday. So happy to have football back. Cowboys looked great yesterday. Um, Niners did. The Cleveland Browns looked decent. So let's see. Let's see what happens there. Uh, Baseball-wise, we are down to the last three weeks of the season. A lot of playoff spots are open still. Um, I saw someone, and I don't know who it was, comment during um, Alex's Bowman's 53 show yesterday that he thought the Dodgers might pull this thing off this year. And while I'm, I'm hoping they will, I, I just don't know. It's Clayton Kershaw with a bad shoulder. Lance Lynn, who eats up innings but gives up a shitload of home runs. 
and a bunch of rookie players, a bunch of rookie pitchers. Um, but somehow Bobby Miller and Pepio and Sheehan, I don't even know their names properly yet. Uh, some of these guys are just really somehow holding on, but I don't know what's going to happen to the Dodgers in the playoffs. I'm, I'm really surprised that they've had this good of a record because I think I thought, I think I said they're going to be a 500 team. And uh, they're going to win the National League West. And let's see what happens in the playoffs because uh, they tend not to do good things in the playoffs. They're, they're, they're kind of like the 49ers of, of, the, of Major League Baseball. Uh, Hobby-wise, what do I got going? Um, I, I had to take notes just because I didn't want to just sit here and mumble. Uh, I went to the Long Beach show over the weekend, um, picked up some, some cards that I'll probably show you in the near future. I'm going to go to the Palm Springs show this weekend. So between the Burbank show, the Long Beach show, the Palm Springs show, that's three week shows in three weeks. I want to talk to you guys about that next week. That's going to be one of my topics. Um, two things that I wanted to bring up to you. I will be, uh, speaking of Bowman, Alex Bowman 53, I will be making an appearance on there this Sunday with a bunch of other wonderful YouTube collectors who have far better collections and far better memories than I do, but uh, I'm honored to be on. So if you've got nothing to do Sunday, um, 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern, check out Alex's show on Bowman 53. It is really a fun time, a lot of good topics, a lot of wonderful collectors. I'll even go on just to say that I think it's probably one of the better shows on YouTube for collectors. So, uh, And that's not just because I'm making an appearance on it. It's just it's good topics, good collectors. Nobody's trying to sell anything. It's just collectors. So uh, t definitely check it out. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, this is kind of a public service, a PSA, a public service announcement. You know, we, we have to remember, we, you know, we have to maintain our cars. We have to make sure the oil's changed and everything's running well. Same thing goes with our card collections. Case in point the other day, and I've heard a couple of other people talk about this recently. I took out five binders of hockey cards that I had from late 80s, early 90s. Very nice sets, nothing expensive. I mean, you know, we're talking the beginnings of Upper Deck, Opeachy type cards, um, and some 80s top cards. But I bought these cards over 30 years ago, 35 years ago probably. And I, made, I did the wonderful thing back then of putting all my cards in sheets in plastic sheets and, and putting them in binders. And they looked great. But now it's 35 years later and those sheets are pretty sticky, you guys. I, I don't know what it is. What is it, the PVC or I don't know what, I don't know what they were thinking back in the 90s and in the 80s. But guys, if, you, if you're sitting on binders from decades ago, take a look, make sure that those sheets are still good. I had to, I went and bought 200, uh, two boxes of 100 count sheets and I am happy to say that I have uh, not lost any cards and all my 1989, 1990, 1990, 1991 Upper Deck hockey sets look fantastic still. But just a PSA, like I said, just check your cards, you guys, because some of you think you have all these great cards and you do, but your sheets are awful. So uh, take a look, please. Do yourself a favor. Uh, what do we got going today? I am going to do uh, one card arrived in the mail a couple of hours ago. So we are going to look at my Duke Snyder player run because it is finally complete from the tops and Bowman perspective. Most of you know I don't collect play. I don't do player runs, but when you are a Dodger, uh, when you're a Dodger team collector, you do end up with cards of every player. So that played for the Dodgers. So let's turn the camera around and we'll take a look at some Duke Snyder cards. All right, so let's start at the beginning. 1949 Bowman, Duke Snyder. Then we have the 50 card. It's funny, well, I bought this graded or this ungraded card so many years ago that I never thought about having it graded or buying a graded card, but that's the 50 Bowman. Same pose. But a little bit more, not as uh, not a not a wide angle shot. Fifty one Bowman, and then he finally makes his first appearance on a Topps card on the fifty one Topps red back. 
along with the 52 Bowman, 52 Tops, 53 Bowman. Now the 53 Bowman, I'm gonna be honest with you, the reason I bought it ungraded so many years ago was I felt I had too many graded cards and I wanted some ungraded cards. So I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, so that's my top row there. Now we're gonna scoot down here, 54 Bowman. I won this when I first got involved in social media. I was on Facebook. There was a thing, I think they're called Razzes, and I paid 10 bucks to enter and my number one. So I won that 54 Bowman for uh, 10 bucks. The 54 tops, I really, really love. To this day when I look at it, that's where I felt I was starting to get serious. I don't know why. I think it was probably just now all of a sudden I was buying 50s Dodgers and I was buying all these great cards from uh, the early 50s now, or early to mid 50s at this point. And then we have his Golden Stamps card. I have this one in a six. I have a second one in a five. And then another one of my favorites is the 55 Tops. I, for some reason, I just really like that set. I think I like the yellow background. So there's my 55 Tops. Same face the next year, 56. And then the very first SGC card I ever owned was the 1957 regular card. He has two of them. Duke has two cards in 57. And that would be this card right here, the next card. Dodger Sluggers along with Carl Farillo, Roy Campanella, Duke Snyder, Gil Hodges. They're all in here. First card moving to Los Angeles. 58. He has a few 58 cards. Duke has a few of them. Here he is with Hall of Fame manager Walt Alston. Dodgers, Boss, and Power. And then I really like this one. Rival Fence Busters with Willie Mays. And right here we got the 59 Duke Snyder. I had an ungraded card of this when I was a kid. And I remember the borders were trimmed. So it was just a green card. I loved it. I thought I had a Duke Snyder card. In reality, uh, I had a very trimmed card. Um, so I bought this one ungraded, or I bought this one graded for a reason. Then uh, these baseball thrills from 1959. Snyder, Snyder's play brings L.A. victory. 1960 Leaf. Um, I bought the Leaf set on a whim. I think the Dodgers have eight cards. Uh, I think Duke Snyder and Brooks Robinson might be the two best cards in that set. And I decided to pick up the Dodger portion of those cards. Just my completest ways, I guess. And going into the last row. These are, this one I just picked up in the last couple of months. I picked this up at the Temecula Show. 1960 Morel Meets card. That, those Morel Meets Dodger cards are beautiful. If you ever get a chance to see them, and if you see them at a show cheap, I would tell you to buy it, even if, even if you don't like the Dodgers, just because those cards, even the cheapest cards I find are like $50 on eBay. So um, at Burbank, I saw, I think, a John Roseboro for $35, and I wouldn't say it was in any type of amazing condition. 60 Duke, 1960 top. That's the first Duke Snyder card I ever owned. I had a G to VG version in my collection as a kid. And then the 61, that's a good pose. And I also picked up this uh, 1961 post serial card a couple of months ago. Not a big fan of the set, but I do, you know, I, I say I'm not a big fan, and then I see them in person, I go, oh, I'm going to buy that. It's just something I really like. His, uh, 
his last base card with the Dodgers, or individual card with the Dodgers, in 1962. In 1963, right before opening day, Duke was sold to the Mets, where he was reunited with his friend and longtime teammate, Gil Hodges. But Series 1 still had this friendly foes card of uh, Hodges in his Dodger uniform, or Snyder in his, Hodges, in his Dodger uniform, and Gil Hodges in the Mets. And then finally in the high numbers, you'll see this is a New York Mets card. He's still in, he's in his Dodger uniform. You could tell that just by the uniform. And then it looks like they uh, painted an NY on his cap on the smaller photo. And then Duke's last, very last card is the 1964 Topps card. He was eventually traded to the Giants at that point, uh, at some point during the season. There is no card of him on the Giants. Uh, but this is, uh, this is my run of Duke Snyder cards. And uh, the reason I'm showing you this video, I, I don't think I stated it, was because I just picked up the last card, and that was this 1963 card. It just arrived in the mail a couple of hours ago. So that is the reason I'm doing a, a Duke Snyder run. And thanks so much for watching. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. It's a beautiful